good morning, you can heal family, or maybe it's afternoon or evening for you. So whatever category you fall in, I'm glad we're here. I'm glad we're together and I'm glad we're reading God's word. So today we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 21 and the titles are Law of Unknown Murder, Law of Marriage, and Law of a Rebellious Son. So as always, as I read, I'll see what I'm thinking about. We'll see what comes up and what comes out of my mouth and trusting that is God ordained and it's something that will be helpful on your healing journey. My name's Sheena and on this channel, we're healing from relationships that have been unhealthy and the pain of the past and we're just using God's word to do that. And we know that God's our helper and we can call on him in times of trouble and he hears us, he's ready to scoop right on in there and, and be anything that you need. Isn't that good? He's our father, he's our friend, he's our helper, he's our counselor, he's our uplifter, you know, he's our God, and, and he certainly is a good one. So let's read, let's read. Law of Unknown Murder, Deuteronomy 21. Suppose someone is found murdered in a field and the land the Lord your God is giving you, and you don't know who committed the murder. In such cases, your leaders and judges must determine which town is nearest the body. Then the leaders of that town must select a young cow that has never been trained or yoked to a plow. They must lead it to a valley that is neither plowed nor planted with the stream running through it. There they must break the cow's neck. Now, did I read this chapter? <laughs> um, yeah, I did. Okay, so I remember breaking the cow's neck and I was saying how cows have really thick necks. So we read chapter 21, but that's okay. If you like where that was going, get your Bible out and, and reread that. But we're going to go uh, right on over to chapter 22. And we are moving right along in Deuteronomy. I think there's 35 chapters. So we're not going to reread. My goodness. Okay, so let's just start over. <laughs> Oh, I cracked myself up. Okay, Deuteronomy 23, everybody. So maybe this woke you up a little bit this morning. You know, you're getting ready. You're kind of moving slow. So who knows? Maybe that got you going. Law of the neighbor's property. If you see your neighbor's ox or sheep wandering away, don't pretend not to see it. Take it back to its owner. Now, you know what this reminds me of? And, I, and I've said this a couple times on my video. When I'm walking and I see garbage and... I, I have a hard time like not picking it up so it could be anything for you like but if you see something out of order or not right just don't act like you don't see it do something you know if it does not belong to someone nearby or you don't know who the owner is keep it until the owner comes looking for it then return it do the same if you find your neighbor's donkey's clothing or anything else your neighbor loses. Don't pretend you did not see it. And this reminds me too of like if you're walking and you find money and you're like, oh, I'm so blessed. And the Lord blessed me. Well, no, someone's probably crying in a corner somewhere because their 20 bucks is gone. So yeah, I, I hate that. I, I don't like finding money. And, you know, try to figure out who the owner is. For sure or a wallet do you ever lose a wallet someone's wallet and or license anything like that i i like to try to get it back to the people if you see your neighbor's ox or donkey lying on the road do not look the other way go and help your neighbor get it to its feet yeah and you know maybe it's not a there's no donkeys probably where you live lying on the side of the road but just in general if you see a co-worker who's a little bit down you know go the little extra mile today and smile and you know maybe spend a couple minutes on a break together but try to do something to pour into that person's life and use the scriptures that are hidden in your heart and, and ask the Lord to bring it forth. He give that person a word today, right? Let, ask God, say, God, use me today. God, I want to be used by you today. And, and see how faithful he'll be. Verse 5 says, Law of separation. A woman must not wear men's clothing, and a man must not wear women's clothing. The Lord your God detests people who do this. Hmm. If you find a bird's nest on the ground, hold on. 
The commentary says the prohibition was probably related to specific pagan activities in Canaan where transvestism was practiced as a part of their religious ritual. Oh, now look at this. Transvestite, transgenders in the Bible. I did not know that. Well, I'm not here to judge anybody, but the Bible says the Lord detests men who dress like women and women who dress like men. <sighs> There's a lot going on in the world today, you can heal family, and we have to learn to not, oh, I don't even know what to say. Just love people, how about that? But the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself and treat people the way God would and, and love people who, who act different than you or are living their life different than you and things like that because you know we want people to see the Jesus in us so if they have questions then we you know they'll feel comfortable coming to us and we can share the gospel and what he says about things like this okay verse 6 if you find a bird's nest on the ground or in a tree and there are young ones or eggs in it with the mother sitting in the nest do not take the mother with the young. You may take the young, but let the mother go so you may prosper and enjoy a long life. Every new house you build must have a barrier around the edge of its flat rooftop. That way you will not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your household if someone falls from the roof. Do not plant any other crop between the rows of your vineyard. If you do, you are forbidden to use either the grapes from the vineyard or the produce of the other crop. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey harness together. Do not wear clothing made of wool and linen woven together. You must put tassels on the four corners of your cloaks. And um, when I just read verse 10, don't plow with the ox or donkey together. I think about, and it's interesting, the next section is about the law of marriage, but like, you know, don't be yoked, unevenly yoked with the person. Make sure that if you're a believer, if you're, you say you're walking with the Lord, the person you choose to be in a relationship with is walking the way you're walking at the same level as, with you at least, right? So you can have fellowship, communion together, and you know, talk about things in the spiritual realm and, and understand each other, right? So you can have that bond. I've been reading um, John Deloney's book, um, Own Your Past, Change Your Own Your Past, Change Your Future. I said something interesting about when people got together, you know, a couple generations ago, it wasn't for looks and they're my soulmate. But it was, we need to be together. We need to work together to build this life and make things happen. And then over the struggle and the hardships, they found love. And they ended up, you know, closer because they, they went through things together and dealt with things together and built that soul, that good relationship. Um, so I don't know where I'm going with that, but that's coming to my mind. But yeah, just make sure if you're saying you're a Christian and but you're dating someone who's not, just beware because you're gonna have troubles. Most likely you will. Most likely you will. Just we, we did it. Brent and I did a little video today. Be a doer of the word. Let's do what God is saying, right? Let's listen to the Bible. Let's not just read it and go willy nilly, but let's do what the word says. Amen. Now verse thirteen says, suppose a man marries a woman and after sleeping with her, changes his mind about her and falsely accuses her of having slept with another man. He might say, I discovered she was not a virgin when I married her. If the man does this, the woman's father and mother must bring the proof of her virginity to the leaders of the town. Her father must tell them, I gave my daughter to this man to be his wife and now he has turned against her. He has accused her of shameful things claiming that she was not a virgin when he married her, but here is a proof of my daughter's virginity. And then they must spread the cloth before the judges. The judges must then punish the man. They will find him 100 pieces of silver, for he is falsely accused a virgin of Israel. 
The payment will be made to the woman's father. The woman will then remain the man's wife and he may never divorce her. <laughs> well, back then you just can't change your mind, but boy, you got to keep her. <laughs> it's see, it wasn't easy to get out of a marriage. Like now you can, you can get out. And if you need to get out of one that's not safe and unhealthy, let the spirit lead you. But not just for any reason, just because you don't like the way she looks or just changed your mind, right? But to learn how to have levels of commitment to people. If, if the relationships are healthy, of course. Verse 20 says, but suppose the man's accusations are true and her virginity could not be proved. In such cases, the judges must take the girl to the door of her father's home and the men of the town will stone her to death. She has committed a disgraceful crime in Israel by being promiscuous while living in her parents' home. Such evil must be cleansed from among you. Okay, well, you know, thank God this doesn't happen because a lot of people are getting together and marrying people and they're not virgins. And thank God, you know, I wasn't stoned to death, <laughs> right? But, and, you know, and I talked the other day just about our purity and honoring our bodies, right? And wanting to be holy. And, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And, and never don't think never think it's too late to honor yourself and to love yourself and to put your your body on a high level right like your body's yours it belongs to you and you don't have to let someone have it because they want it right we don't have to do that um verse 22 if a man is discovered committing adultery, both he and the other man's wife. Wait a minute, I think I, hold on. Um, okay, if a man is discovered committing adultery, both he and the other man's wife must be killed. If in this way, the evil will be cleansed from Israel. Suppose a man meets a young woman, a virgin, who is engaged to be married, and he has sexual intercourse with her. If this happens within a town, you must take both of them to the gates of the town and stone them to death. Oh my goodness. Now see, these people were fornicating and then they had to die. And you know, if we, if you are out there and you're fornicating, you, you probably are not gonna get stoned to death. But spiritually, you die every time. Like you lose that innocence, you know? And, and I guess, um, I guess just from, you know, my history and my past, I, I really feel strongly about just waiting. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. And, you know, it's so easy to say when you're not in a relationship. Well, yeah, no problem. But just making the decision every day and um, not putting yourself in situations where something could happen if you're dating someone or someone's caught your eye, you know. Don't, don't have them at your home. Meet in public. Do things in public. Open spaces. Public places, right? That's good. Open spaces, public places. Keep everything on the up and up. And you'll sleep better at night. You'll feel better about yourself. And then you have time to ask questions. Ask questions, ask questions, and find out. Get to know a person, you know? Um, you know, my dad used to tell me, once you lay down with a person, you're giving them everything you've got. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, the woman, okay, you must take both of them to the gates of the town and stone them to death. The woman is guilty because she did not scream for help. The man must die because he violated another man's wife. In this way, you will cleanse the land of evil. But if the man meets the engaged woman out in the country and he rapes her, then only the man should die. Do nothing to the young woman. She has committed no crime worthy of death. This case is similar to that of someone who attacks and murders a neighbor. Since the man raped her out in the country, it must be assumed that she screamed, but there was no one to rescue her. 
If a man is caught in the act of raping a young woman who is not engaged, he must pay 50 pieces of silver to her father. Then he must marry the young woman because he violated her and he will never be allowed to divorce her. A man must not have intercourse with his father's wife or this would violate his father. So um, for some of you, the word rape in there might've been triggering. Someone listening might have experienced that. I know I have. So I get it. I understand. But remember, it's what's the date today? May 7th, 2023. It's not happening now. Reconnect to your body. Take deep breaths. You know, and, and relax. And um, know that you're safe and you're okay in this moment right now. And find a good counselor and therapist and work through some things and, and get the help you need. You know, get the help you need. You can always book a coaching call with me. I'm not a counselor, therapist, I'm a life coach, but I've experienced that. So I understand um, the trauma it can bring up. So if you need to talk to someone and to have someone listen, um, you can book a call at sheenamajor.com. Backlash call. All right, so pretty tough things there. But just honor yourself, love yourself, and know that um, you are worthy. You are valuable, you are important, and you matter. I say that a lot. And that's our reading for today, You Can Heal Family. That was Deuteronomy chapter 22. And like I said, we're moving right along. And um, I'll be back tomorrow morning with you. And uh, we just get to hang out and read the Bible together. We're going to do it, you guys. We're going to read the whole entire Old Testament. So we've read this much so far. Isn't that good? Now, some of it is like the beginning of the Bible pages, but we've read all this and we've got to read. <laughs> now, don't get freaked out how much we have left. But listen, just think how much we're going to know each other. We've got to read this much more. Okay? No problem. We can do it, right? We're in this together. You can heal family. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. We'll talk soon. Bye.